Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be having a look at my Afterglow lighting resources because I've been playing around recently, kind of working on the next version, and I thought it'd be nice to give some use cases for like immediately nice lighting results for artwork that isn't actually mine. So you may recognize this as the Wasp by Emiliano Colantoni. I've got this and another splash screen object, which is actually a, a dinosaur one, which you might also recognize. We're going to use these as demonstration objects because even with good lighting resources like Afterglow, there's still a little bit of technical skill involved and just an awareness of how to utilize the tools available to you. So consider this a bit of a workshop. What we're going to do just so we can take a look at the materials is we're going to have no lights to start with. And by the way, Emiliano, if you're unaware, is a fantastic artist, largely specializes in hard surface type stuff and likes experimenting with different modeling techniques. So let's see, we've got a basic uh, wasp object here and it's a bust of a character. You can see the materials there, a mix of organic and metallic textured, nicely painted. It might be a combination of painted and semi-proc and by the way, you can download the splash screen content from the Blender website. So let's say that you have something cool that you want to light in Blender, but you're not quite sure how to approach it. Well, the reason why I developed lighting tools for myself, being Afterglow, is again to give myself like a starting point to jump off from. So I activated Studio Cage 9, which is one of the uh, Studio Cage lighting presets. And if I go in the solid view, you can actually see this here. So these are different objects that have light projecting off of them, but they're hidden from the camera in the rendered view. And they're set up to provide a nice lighting profile for whatever you put in the middle of them. But the thing is, even though these these are designed to give you good results from the very beginning. We've got a combination of light and dark ones. They don't have to be just that. Because obviously when I see people using Afterglow, they you know they throw something in one of the studio cages or studio environments and then they render it immediately and they enjoy how that looks and that's great because it's really nice to see that. But one thing I want to highlight in this video is that just with a subtle bit of change, you can get something very powerful and completely different. So these are physical lighting objects. They have emissive surfaces given to them by emissive materials. If I click on this one here, go to my object properties and make it visible to the camera, you'll see what it looks like. And there's also a gradient here that I would like to improve over time, by the way. I want to add more like specific gradient controls. For now, when you modify the color ramp, it's going to restrict it to the edges. Not perfectly, because I wanted to get finer control over that in the future. But thing is, as I adjust the gradient, do you see what's happening to our character? It's not just an adjustment on the intensity, it's also a very slight change on the actual look of the lighting because the light is actually moving because the point of the most intense light is actually shifting along the bar. Then if I double tap R, I can rotate it. So look as I rotate up and down, look what's happening to the eyes on the character. Do you see that? And I can rotate left and right. Now, obviously the light is still visible to the camera. So if I disable that and then do it, we won't actually see the light in the frame. So you see what's happening here. We're working within one of the studio cages and we're effectively using it as a multi-purpose tool. And then of course, if we want color adjustments, however you like, you technically could even add in other colors. So let's do something a little bit funky. Let's tighten that up. Maybe put like a white on the end. So we've got a bit of a gradient here. You can see we've got black up to a certain point. So we're restricting the amount of light. Then we've got a blue, a red, and then that's interrupted by some white, which means as I rotate this around, we're going to get like a gradient color distribution. Also from different angles, that looks quite nice. So that's just one single ring light here that we're moving. We have this kind of control for like all of the other lights as well. If I select everything else, let's see what that does as I rotate it around. Now we're getting like really strong control over the shadows. So if I just rotate up, then it's like the lighting is going to be biased to the top. If I rotate down, it's like the lighting will be biased downwards. But notice that because there's such an interesting spherical distribution around the object because it's you know they're rounded studio lights no matter where you put it it's gonna look good because there's always something trying to balance it on the other side physically so that's just something that I want to highlight that if you're enjoying the afterglow lighting assets and you want to push it a bit further play around with the actual light sources sometimes they're a bit hard to find obviously because again when they're hidden in the camera you need to go into the viewport mode to see them otherwise you can activate them by the very visibility but if you do play around I guarantee you you will be surprised and you will discover interesting new combinations which again you can save make variations of it save it for the future if you discover something that looks really good why remake it every time save your own variations okay so now i've activated studio cage one this is a bright environment and there's only a few lights here so we got one above one below one from the side and to visualize what the gradient does on this one it just basically closes in internally so by defining the gradient here you see how we basically keep the same lighting setup but it's just reducing the amount of ambient light so i know that depending on the color profile selected people might drop stuff into these light studio cages and think whoa that's way too overexposed just do this 
Now the left and the bottom one are separated in terms of material. So that's another note to make as well is that you could actually just separate these, you know, by making variations of the materials. And then I can independently control the top one as well. So once we've reduced the amount of ambient light with the side ones, then we can get to doing this. And by bringing the gradient together, we can also sharpen the light as well. So it makes it a bit less of a soft shadow look. And then I can physically move it. So I press G and then move left to right or up and down. And that's going to give us adjustments as well. Also, I could rotate it. So I'll double tap R and I could point it backwards towards the light catcher. Now it's visible in the camera at the moment. So that's what it looks like here. You know, you can rotate it, point it back. In which case, if I just move that out of the frame, we get a kind of moody silhouette. Then I can just point that down slightly. And you can see how we're getting interesting, you know, lighting combos that fit different moods. Okay, so that's the Wasp. And again, you know, there's a whole variety of other cages we haven't even played with. Okay, so let's take a look at the Cynosauropteryx, I believe it is. So again, to look at this one, let's just put a basic light in and see what we have. It's going to be a difficult one to light. There's quite a lot of fur on this. There we go. So you may recognize this from the old splash screen. So there's fur, some basic texturing, and a very nice looking eye. Up close, areas like the teeth are a little bit basic, but you know, it looks good from the right angle. Now let me remove the area light and I'm just gonna open Studio Cage 6. Now immediately, isn't that cool? Now I believe I have already made changes to this because I've been experimenting in this file. I can't remember exactly what the currently available version of Afterglow is. So as you can see here, the gradient that's plugged in, oh yeah, that might be the original one actually. So by default, it might look like this in the scene and I've just plugged in a gradient like this. So it's restricted to one edge. I feel that showing you how easy it is to do like backlighting using a studio environment would be a nice demo because fur always kind of looks good when it's backlit. Up close, we've got something like this and I believe I've got depth of field enabled. If we're looking top down, we're seeing it like this and you can see the kind of fuzzy fur there with the backlit floor. Hold on, if I move the depth of field marker down a bit, that might put the fur slightly more in focus and it looks kind of cool here having the almost LED like panels highlighting the fur there. And again, from the side, it's just an ominous profile, right? And I can scrub the gradient back and forth and we can control how much of it is lit. So we could go proper silhouette mode by only having a thin strip of light along the edge boundary there, which creeps up the back wall. Otherwise we could bring it out more and just like highlight the whole thing. But that looks a bit flat, right? Because there's too much light. Naturally as well, I like starting with cool colors here, but if say we want to convey the impact of the kill, then we can choose something a bit red instead. Okay, so that's a variation of Studio 6 and Studio 6 is basically all about having the floor lighting with the panel look to it. So let's try a different one. All right, this next one is Studio 4. So instead of the floor, it's the side wall. So you can see that here. And again, this one is really good for backlighting. I'd say it's actually more powerful when it comes to kind of highlighting the fur behind. Let me just move the depth of field marker back to the face. Okay, so we've got Sino here uh, front on. It's quite nice to see the reflection in the eye there. That's something I noticed in other demos as well, actually if I quickly turn on Studio One, there's more of like a kind of lined grid pattern going along the top. And you can actually see that in the right eye here, if we zoom in. So you see those lines going along. Oh, we can see it in the background up there. So again, sidewall, this one looks quite nice because the bottom floor is not too reflective. So we're getting some kind of softer bounce light around the base. And again, from the back, we get a stronger highlight along the fur. And of course I can always tighten that up a bit. So this one's quite nice for a silhouette. And then if I move the gradient downwards, maybe to bring it a bit more more in line with our dino, then again, you can get creative with it. I think maybe something like a little yellow works quite nice for this. So there's something a bit historical, geological about it, you know, rock color. And again, we had a little preview of Studio One, which I think by default comes with this applied. But if you haven't watched the original Afterglow Crash Course, then you can just swap out the light pans for any image texture you like. So there are a variety of ones which come with the product here, as you can see. So I could grab like uh, this corner gradient one, plug the vector in, plug that into the emission, and then like one corner will become lit in accordance to the image and the direction can be flipped as well. And there's a whole bunch of other like vector controls you can play with. So there's actually different variations of this I can play with. So if I plug in one with more corners being lines, then you'll see that distributing in the scene. For now though, I'm going to keep on what it was because I really like the lighting on the Sinosauropteryx. It's going to be a really weird name to remember from this angle here, especially with the depth of field as well. Now remember gradient control is the name of the game. So if I swap that over to a circular gradient, 
which is supported in the nodes. Then after we let it resolve a bit, that's going to be represented again in the eye there. It's going to give us different bounce lighting. The point is that like each of these rooms and each of these environments are useful in their original forms. But I also want to get across that there's a lot of power you have control over by just modifying a few different values. So I think that's where we'll leave it there. If you want to grab it, Afterglow is available on Gumroad and Blender Market, soon to be Superhive, is it? Let me just check that. Yep. So Blender Market is going to be renamed to Superhive at some point soon. There's different licenses available. We have a studio friendly license. It's quite easy to understand, but I put a video on my new Curtis Holt online channel explaining the license. So if you made it this far through the video, put some kind of lighting related emoji. Stay safe, everyone, and I will see you next time.